Hayato, you've made me the happiest man in the world. <gasps> and then you say, Will you marry me? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Small Talk Kagoshima on this podcast. Hayato, you got to look at the camera. I'm sorry. I was bowing. Okay, look. Okay, La <laughs> last time we did this this podcast, I was watching the the show. Yeah. And like while I'm talking, you're looking all over the place. You can't do that, Hayato. I'm I'm very sorry. I I have a attention deficit Defi disorder. Defi yeah. ADD. ADD. Yeah. How do you say ADD or ADHD in Japanese? Uh, tado. It really? Tado, yeah. It means like many action. Tado. Lots of action. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this time look straight at the camera while I okay. read my cue card, okay? Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Small Talk Kagoshima. On this pod... Uh, see, you're messing me up here, okay? <laughs> On this podcast, we talk about all things Japan and Kagoshima in English. I'm Michi, and this is my co-host... Hayato, and hello. Hay Hayato, ADHD, Hayato. ADD. <laughs> I don't know. What's the difference between the two? I'm not, I don't know. I we, don't know. we are not doctors I'm on, sorry. on this show. We are not doctors. Yep. Hayato, yep. now uh, this is your fourth or third or fourth show? Um, I believe this is my fourth. I'm not sure. Fourth. Fifth. So, so basically what you're saying is you're a pro now. You're completely used to doing the show. Um, I'm getting there. Getting better. At I'm it. getting better. I'm getting better. I'm I'm still like need your help though. I'm not gonna help you. Or him over there. Jo Josh is sitting off camera right over here. He's our. He's actually doing your job too now. He's oh yeah. Li he's listening in and manning the camera. So he's yeah. What would we call his job now? S Audio guy, camera guy. He's the AV guy. In high school, we had AV club. AV club. Audio video club. Well, that's a weird club. <laughs> and the image of people in the AV club is that they're really big geeks. Otakune? Uh, uh, in, in English, you say AV is like audio visual. Audio video. Audio video club. Okay. I think audio video. Yeah. Okay. Because in Japanese, it's totally different. Now I think it's gone because we're now in the era of computers. Okay. So like maybe it's just like digital media club or something. Okay. Oh. Were, were you in the AV club? Josh, he was in the drama club. <laughs> the drama club guy is not in front of the camera. What's that about? Let's go out here, Josh. Well, he does come out a little bit at the end. Uh, he, uh, he does the, the uh, sponsor uh, read at the end. Yeah, so. yeah. He flex a little bit. Yeah, he's going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wh what was your club in high school, Hayato? What did, what did you... Um, actually, I was in anime club. Is that a thing? That was a thing, yeah. But I was there because my friends were there. I, I didn't really... I didn't really care. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, okay, for those at home who don't know, Hayato, you uh, are Japanese, but you I'm went Japanese. to high school in America. Yes. I was Junior in... high school, high school. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in high school, um, we had a an... there, there were like many clubs, but I was in anime club because wait. my friends were in it. And... So, so, so in America, there was a an Japanese anime club. Oh, yeah, a Japanese anime club. Yeah. Wait, what kind of people went to, were like club members of the Japanese anime club? I would say nerds. So nerd again is like otaku. <laughs> but I mean, the image of people who like manga and anime in uh, in America are not like the football players or like the the traditional cool kids, but kind of more of the like, uh, you know, they like their niche. Yeah, that's right. Stuff yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, but recently it's cool to be nerdy. I think so. Yeah. I think it's different now. Yeah. Like before it was kind of like, oh my God, you like that stuff. But now it's like, wow, me too. I like that stuff too. Kind of thing. Yeah. I think back then it was like, Ooh, it was hard for me to actually enter the room. Wait. So what kind of kids were in the club? Tell me about the other club members. Um, well, the school I went to, uh, a lot of a Asians. Oh, wait, in California. Okay, so in California, you were near Los Angeles, kind of. 
Um, I was in San Jose. San Jose, which okay. Which is about maybe six hours from uh, L.A. And um, uh, many Asians. Mostly Asians and... Uh, Hispanics? Hispanics, that's right. Yeah. So California, just like everywhere in America, is a mixing bowl. It has a lot of different people. And uh, there are a lot of Asians in California, especially in um, places like L.A. Not San Jose, I I've, I've, don't think I've ever been there. But in, in, in L.A., they have like Korean town and Chinatown and yeah. little uh, Tokyo. I think Chinatown and like Koreatown, it's, uh, it's pretty much everywhere, right? I mean, uh, in Vegas, no? Oh, yeah, we got, we got Chinatown. I don't think we have Korean town. Don't, don't quote me on that, but in Vegas, we have uh, Chinatown for sure. Yeah. And what's great about Chinatown is after you go drinking uh, somewhere like on the strip or in a club at four o'clock in the morning, you can go and eat. Uh, I forgot the English word for it. I think it's Peking duck. Duck. Peking duck. Yeah. You can go eat duck at like four o'clock in the morning. Wow, That sounds good. So, yeah. So you can get you can get duck at four o'clock in the morning. And then also, you know, the lazy Susan. Oh, uh, the, the table that you can spin around. Yeah, you can like spin it. You put the little dishes on it yeah. and then you can spin it around and eat from like other people's, like yeah, all the yeah, little dishes. Ah, yeah. oh, it's yeah. so good. I miss Chinese food. We can we, have, we, I mean, there are a lot of Chinese restaurants here, but I miss like the real, the real, yeah, real the, stuff. The you Chinese know? foods in Japan, I think, try to tailor, make the custom, make the food for Japanese taste yeah it's a little sweeter not so spicy kind of thing mm. but american chinese food is also kind of weird like there's some like what is it called mongolian beef that's not a thing in china i don't <laughs> think it's really good though <laughs> how about Vietna vietnamese food do you eat pho i eat pho yeah pho, pho. pho. you gotta say it right Can pho you, is that actually how you say it yeah pho pho oh i, I call it pho is there any uh food that you don't eat um, I actually do not prefer Japanese food. What? Like, like traditional, uh, how would you say, like a New Year food, you know? Um, osechi. Osechi, uh, steamed stuff. I, I actually, oh, you I mean don't really. The, the historical, like, uh, like the, what is it called? Yeah. Lo that kind of food that they use are like, you know, events. Yeah. What, you know, like new, e I would say, I call it the new year food. You know, Do you, what about ozoni? Ozoni? Oh yeah, I can eat. Yeah. Wait, so ozoni is different from every prefecture, right? I think so. Yeah. May, I don't know. You don't know? I think it is. So Kagoshima Ozoni has, um, we call it uh, Kuma Ebi. It's a dry, big shrimp. It's like a jumbo shrimp that's been dried. Um, it's a soup that you put a couple things like mochi. Then you put like, you know, the the main dish changes depending on the prefecture. So Kagoshima shrimp, Miyazaki's, I think, chicken. Oh, uh, chicken, yeah. So yeah. it changes depending on the, the family or the local area and things like that. Uh -huh. And it's a dish that you eat you eat it right at New Year's or New Year's Day? Where, where do you eat it? I forgot. New Year's Day. Day. The first day. Yeah. Uh, New Year's Eve, we actually eat soba. soba. Yeah. That's right. We call it the um, toshikoshi, which is uh, coming changing of, of the, the, yeah, changing, changing of the year. Of the year. Soba. Soba is... Um, Buck, buckwheat noodles. Buckwheat. But I think everybody knows what soba noodles are now. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those gray... Noodles. They say it doesn't make you fat, but it's not true. If you eat too much of anything, it'll make you fat. Oh, too much of anything, yeah. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Yeah. Do you prefer hot soba or cold soba? So that totally depends on the season. If it's winter, I totally want hot soba. But if it's summer, I want cold soba. It's the really? same thing with the... It's like ramen noodles in the in the summertime. You eat it. It's called hiyashi... hiyashi uh hiyashi ramen ne. uh yeah hiyashi chu or something uh, hiyashi chuka is that what it's called hiyashi chuka yeah hiyashi chuka is um i don't know if it's ramen but, but yeah it's, it's like it's a, it's a very it has a with vegetable tomatoes cucumbers but it's um 
it's, you eat it cold. Yeah. It's got noodles in it, right? It got noodles. Yeah. 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 I don't know if they're ramen noodles, but they're noodles. And then there's also one that you eat with ramen noodles and you cook them first and you pull out all the water and you put them in cold water. And maybe it's not ramen. Maybe it's a different kind of noodle. I might be lying. It's the straight white ones. It's not ramen. It's the straight. Udon. Somen. Ah, somen. <laughs> That's what it is. Somen. Ah, somen. Yeah. Somen. Yeah. You take somen and you dip it in, I think, a vinegar like sauce and you eat it. Yeah. It's I really mean, really good. Yeah. There is a special sort of like a sauce for somen. Um, it's, it's good. You put ice, yeah. ice in it. Wasabi. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Dude, Asian food is so good. All of it together. Just like, I, if you, you put it out all on a big like, table, I'm there. I'm just going to eat all day. But you, living in California, you also had access to <gasps> Mexican food. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I wish Kagoshima had more of, Mexican food. Yeah. I mean, there are some, but you miss, the, you miss back you're talking you know. about Tex-Mex, right? That's what we eat in America usually. It's called Tex-Mex. But yeah. have you ever had like real Mexican food? I don't think I have. I don't think so. Yeah, real Mexican food is so good. I like it. I also like Mexican beer. Dos Equis. I uh, love it. It's great. Dos Equis? Yeah, it means two X's. <laughs> ah, okay. And like it's a green bottle. There's actually a green bottle and a, and a, a brown bottle, but I prefer the green one. I forgot its name, but it's Dos Equis. Ah, so good. Ooh, man. I like I like all food. Indian food, Sri Lankan. Uh, spice curry. Yeah, we spicy. actually have really good Sri Lankan curry here in Kagoshima. I think we did a food blog on it, right, Josh? Yeah, it was, it's really good. But don't, when they ask you one to ten spice, don't assume that they mean like one to ten Japanese spice. They're like one to ten Sri Lankan spice. Because I was like, oh, I could totally go for like an eight. And I was like sweating. I was like. I asked for 10. Do you? Yeah. You get oh, yeah. 100? It's one to 100. Oh, sorry. We'll just factor. Just add a zero to what I just said. I ate the 100. Yeah. It's How not, was it? It's, it's okay. When you go to uh, Goya, the soup curry restaurant here in Kagoshima, what do you get? Um. Goya is, is a, yeah. is a uh, f uh, name of a restaurant here in Kagoshima. It uh, is soup curry, which is actually, I think, first created in Hokkaido. And uh, it's, it's hard to imagine. Imagine you just have to go there. Was that on the food blog? It's also on my food blog. But also on the food blog, which we'll put on the screen down here on Instagram. Uh, so please check out our food blog. Uh, it is awesome. It'll make you want to eat everything. Uh, anyway, soup curry has got vegetables and meat and chashu and all that stuff inside the inside the, the soup. And you can get spice zero to 100. They say anything past 50, they actually charge a little bit extra money because they put so much spice into it. Mm. What, what do you get there? I think I got pretty close to 100, I think. I think I max out at like 50. Yeah, I mean, I think I didn't want to pay money so <laughs> it's for me it's not the spice here that's the problem it's everything that happens from here down that's the problem yeah i mean if you're i don't know if i can say it. if you're constipated it helps me it definitely helps me uh why is there so much toilet talk on this podcast guys it's small talk kagoshima not toilet talk kagoshima it's not it's human talk we were, <laughs> we're talking about the real stuff here all right, now it's time for our news talk section. In this section, we choose a Japanese news topic and talk about it in English. Remember, if you guys have any opinions about anything we talk about, leave us a comment or write us on Twitter at Kago Talk, message our Facebook page, Small Talk Kagoshima, or become our line friend with the information on screen. All right, today's news co uh, topic comes from LiveJapan.com, and the title is international marriages mm -hmm. six surprising things british men learned after marrying a japanese woman <gasps> okay so are you a british man hayato i don't know maybe no i'm just kidding no i'm not i'm definitely not a british man i am american and japanese and but we do at our Aikawa school stapleton Aikawa, we have a british teacher named mr dan mr dan mr dan is notably different <laughs> from his American and Japanese uh, co-workers. Yeah. 
it's like noticeable. Yeah, yes. like I tell you about it. Like you think that British people and American people would be just really similar because mm-hmm. Britain and America are really good friends. Uh, we speak the same language. America used to be a part of Britain, but they're so different. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe the way it's cultural thing. I don't know. Cultural and also words. Like for example, uh, Japanese people say baby car. We say stroller. And then English people say pram or something like that. Pram. Pram. Really? They have like three different words for bait for a stroller. Oh, really? And then another weird thing about, listen, you British people, another weird thing that you guys do, when you enter a, the, a building, that is the first floor. It has a floor. It's the first one you see. It's the first floor. You go upstairs. It's the second floor you see. It should be called the second floor. British people say the first floor is ground floor. Ground floor, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the yeah, second yeah. floor is first floor. Yeah, that's pretty confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on the phone with Dan once, and I said, hey, I'm on the first floor. Come and meet me. And he said, okay. And then like 10 minutes go by, and I don't see Dan. And I call him, and I'm like, where are you? He's like, I'm waiting on the first floor. <coughs> it turns out he's on the second floor, and I'm like, Dude, <laughs> what other what other words are different? Um, we, they actually add the letter U in color. Oh, in spelling, honor, and favorite, favorite color. Yeah. yeah, that's that's more more to write. That's tiring for your hands. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? A uh, bonnet. Uh, well, in Japanese we say bonnet, bonnetto. In Japanese, bonnet, uh, in front of your car, right? Yeah, the hood. Yeah, that's actually, it came from the British English. Bonnet, really? Yeah, bonnet, yeah. We bonnet. say hood. I, so if I the say hood. Hudo, hudo in Japanese, it doesn't make sense? Hudo, no. <laughs> really? Hudo? Ah, yeah. food. You yeah, don't cause, say hudo. Because yeah. H and F are the same sound in Japanese, right? Yeah, so you don't, you don't say hood. Wait, wait, let's do this together. Ha, he, fu, fu. Ha, he, fu. Who? 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 Ha, he, who, who? Okay, not like F, no. Ha, not he, who? Ha, ha, he, who, he, he ho. ho. Yes. <laughs> uh, for you guys that don't understand what's happening right now, Japanese has like hiragana, katakana, and they have all the sounds, like the um, uh, English a- alphabet. And so the H line goes ha, he, but not who, not fu, like a blend. Ha, he, who, ha, he, who, he, ho. Ha he who, yeah, not the not like. The the most difficult one is da di do do. I think for uh, English speakers. Ah uh, yeah, la di do do. Because we could, we usually say like ra ri ru re ro. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, British people can they can agree a lot. They they can probably say it like like ra la li. Your one of your best friends, uh, Ken. Ha, he's a half Japanese, half British. Yeah, yeah. Grew up in Britain. Uh huh. You used to try to do his impersonation, monomane, like all the time. Yeah. You were not very good. <laughs> was I? I don't think so. I was. I wasn't good. I don't know. Why don't you try it? Uh, uh, I'm not good. Not good. <laughs> Does that mean tired or drunk or? It means I'm tired. Knockered. Knock. I'm knocked. <laughs> uh. Dan, the guy that we work with, he's uh, he is local British accent. They drop the T at the end of the word before Y. For example, P A R T Y. We say party, and in his local British accent, it says he says pie, pie, no uh, T. Yeah. Sounds like pie. <laughs> pie. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't say he doesn't say T sometimes. Yeah, it's. Anyway, getting back to the news topic, <laughs> <Wow. laughs> uh, there's there's six surprising things that uh, the British men learned. Oh, British men learned. Okay. Yeah, because I think Japanese women in in the world have an image of being like really kind and sweet and cute, and they make bento for you and like that. Uh, would you say the image of Japanese women is like the they will take care of you, like men? Oh, how do you say it? the dominant? dominance of yeah you know, you know what I mean like kind of like that's the maybe I mean it's changing obviously but that's kind of like the traditional 
uh, image. And then like the, uh-huh. I think the traditional image of British man is like a gentleman. Yeah, that's you know, right. Like, you yeah. know, like drinking tea. Biscuits. Biscuits. <laughs> 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 All right, the first thing. Uh, so it's just a couple minutes. She's too fussy about time. So in um, in like I think Western cultures, mm-hmm. if you're like one or two or three minutes late, it's yeah. okay. Okay. There's like five minute grace period. Five minute grace period. Mm-hmm. But how about you, Japan? Like how how's the feeling on time? Um, when it's work related or you know like business then it's always good to be there 10 minutes before the that time so i'm gonna i'm gonna add to that and say in tokyo 15 minutes before is on time 15 15 minutes before yeah okay and in kagoshima like exactly on time is on time (laughs) Yeah. So it just kind of reduces in <laughs> in length as you come down to Kagoshima. Down south, yeah. Then you go to Okinawa and there is this thing called Okinawa time and it's like you say the party is going to start at 6 p.m. and people show up anywhere from 6 p.m. till like 1 a.m. <laughs> it's like any time they want to come. Yeah, that's that's south stuff. Yeah, <laughs> even in Kagoshima, it's like we never really come on time like, yeah kagoshima time Kagosh- kagoshima time so and people walk slow too they drive slow walk slow yeah it's tokyo it's slow. like go 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 i'm busy i gotta go here i'm a salary man kind of thing yeah but yeah i, mean, I don't know because my actually my my family my my dad he's really on time like he he doesn't want to be late he's very strict about time me I, i'm not so much my wife's family, they're Kagoshima time. They're just like late. Late. Late is it's okay. It's normal. So all right, the next one is Japanese husbands get an allowance. So oh. uh so this is this is a very Japanese thing. I don't know any other country that does this, that the husband goes to work and then gets his salary, comes home and gives the entire salary to the wife. And then the wife takes a little bit out and gives it back to him. He, this is for you. The rest is for the family. Yes, that is true. But that's not everyone. It's not everyone. Either. Is that how your house works? No, not my house. But I. But she's in control of the money. I don't. I don't get an allowance, but I leave it up to her. She has. Uh, she control. she pays the bills. Yeah, she pays the bills. She, you know, she's good with money. So, you know, I think it's person who's smarter should do this job. <laughs> Are you saying your wife is smarter? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> she's good with money. So uh, she's good with numbers. But yeah, uh, like uh, some of the some of the friends or people I know. Yeah, they get allowance like maybe 100 or 200 dollars. I saw uh, a, a month. I saw a Crayon Shinchan episode where the father got drunk and lost the salary. Ooh. Because like they in some businesses in Japan, they they still give you an envelope with your month's salary in it, and you have to take it home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. still happens some places. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and he lost it. Yeah, he lost it. So that was the episode. Ooh. But wow. I think they found it or something. Well, it's not, it's but the lounge thing is not normal. It's it's not normal, right? It's only in Japan. Thing. I think I've never been married or have a wife in America, but I think in America, I think it's like you have a joint account and like your salary and her salary go into the same bank account and then you make decisions together. And I don't know anything about Britain, but I assume Britain's kind of the same way. Okay. I'll ask Dan later, but I don't think he knows either because he's lived most of his life here. So next thing, splurging on crisp, splurging means to spend a lot of money. Splurging on Christmas and New Year's gifts. Oh, okay. So this is a cultural difference. Uh, in Western co- countries, Christmas is the gift giving time. Yes. In Japan, maybe even in other Asian countries, uh, the New Year's is a time to give money to people. That's right. That's right. Uh, especially kids. Younger, younger, younger people. Younger people, yeah. What's that called? Otoshidama. Otoshidama. What you, do you get otoshidama? Dude, I'm an... I'm a man, okay? <laughs> but I give, I give. But I mean, like, does your dad give you otoshidama? Or no. Something? When I'm does gonna, that stop? It stops when you um, 
it stops when you're an adult, basically. So sometimes people still receive when they're in college. But I would say like maybe 20 years old. But I mean, yeah, if you're an adult, you don't get it. Some people, they stop in high school, but yeah. But okay. yeah, you get money. I used to get money. Now I have to give money to kids, New Year's. Yeah, so. So do you also give Christmas presents? Christmas present for my family, yeah, but but I don't I don't, I think uh, Christmas is not so big here in um, Japan, especially like if you're in America or something, you have a big party, Christmas party. Yeah, you get the turkey out and uh, everything. Yeah, like let's get f- friends and families. I uh, in Japan too, but I guess New Year party is is bigger in America. <clears throat> yeah, I think New Year's is is the big one, but the thing is, is New Year so. In in Western countries, New Year's is like a big party outside in the streets, drinking and having fun. Yeah. And Christmas is at home with your family. In Japan, really strangely, because you would think that, you know, Japan would be like our big party for the new year. In Japan is like you go outside on New Year's Eve. No one's outside. Everybody's at home with their family. Yes, that's really right. Really strange. And also uh, Christmas is a day where uh, a single man that's or a Christmas woman. That's Christmas Eve. Yeah, single man or a woman, they want to get like boyfriend or girlfriend until Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, so Christmas Oops. Eve is the the day where everybody goes on dates. Yes, that's like the romantic. Yeah, day. and then Christmas Day is the like the spend time together day, eating chicken. <laughs> yes, we'll talk about this closer to Christmas, but there's some weird stuff that goes on in Japan on Christmas. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. There are so many events related to death in Japan. So the, what he's talking about is like, like, for example, when somebody dies, mm-hmm. there's the, uh, what do you call it? Tsu, 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 tsu yu, tsuya. Oh, tsuya. Oh, tsuya. Tsuya, Hi. which is like the wake. Yeah. And it's like a 24 hour or something like that, like wake where um, people will come all day and all night. Like you don't sleep. Yeah, you don't sleep. This yeah. is after somebody passes away. Yes. And people come to show their respect. Yeah. Uh, friends and family, they come, uh, show respect. And yeah, that's the, it's like a goodbye time. Then after that, there's the funeral, which is a formal service. Uh, a monk, if, you're, if they're uh, Buddhist, which most people are. Monk comes and does a, he does an incantation chant thing. Um, I don't really know the English word for it. But then everybody has the special beads they gotta uh-huh. wear yes and you gotta wear like suit or nothing really like celebratory nothing white like everything should be kind of dark everything yeah black and then the person is given a new name yeah in the buddhist cultures he's given a new name so they call the person by their new name okay you've never seen this before um have you been to a funeral yeah they buy a new name for the person really yeah anyway <laughs> And then they, they see the, I guess, I think, don't quote me on this, uh, they see the soul off to the, to the next life. Then, so that's the funeral, okay? Then, after that, there's the cremation. Yeah, that's so right. So the close family members go to the crematory with the, with, the, you know, with the deceased person, and then they cremate the body the same day, mm-hmm. and then the close family members go into a room, and they pass the bones... Of yeah. the person that was just cremated, so it's still hot and smells like burnt, into the urn. Yes. How do you say urn in Japanese? Kotsutsubo. Uh, and so you just... Like a bone little yeah. thing. And then, then like after that, one month later, there's something, right? Uh, so basically you have the bones, You uh, now they have uh, tombstones. Um Nowadays, things are a little changing. But they traditionally, grave somewhere. Grave. Um, yes, grave. You go to the grave and then you uh, put the bones. Inside. Inside and then. Yes, pray. Pray. And then maybe during the old bone, which is around August. But isn't there like one month something that happens? Maybe you can't go out and play or anything for one month or something like that. Um, I don't know. Okay. 
And then he oba on day you go to the grave again. Yes, yeah, so you basically have to go and then uh, clean. Walk, clean the tombstone and yes. Um and then again New Year's. New Year's, yep. Yeah. yeah, you you have to kind of visit uh a lot a, a lot yes yeah like uh this is a british man ta- writing this article but for in america like it's like they're buried and if you're like the if it, it's like your husband or something then you go like once a year give flowers or something like that but it's not it's not like a huge thing uh-huh. but in japan it's like they go and they go and they go it's like very important part of their religion yeah, and then there's also like uh, maybe four years or something. There's always that time they the family come and then uh, they don't celebrate the death, but uh, yeah, they show respect uh, heard, every I, couple years. I really, I really am not so like versed on this, but there is something that like or like one month after the death and like one year after the death, yeah. you got to call the monk and he comes and does stuff. I, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, do. it it's there's a lot of lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff. It's, it's, I've done this for close friends and and coworkers, but um, uh, it's just so much I don't remember. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> to do. Yes. All right, let's continue on. Uh, families with children tend to sleep together. Where is the couple's intimacy? Uh huh. So, no, well, that's you everybody. have you have a kid and a wife. Yeah. How? Yeah. What's your sleeping situation, Mister Hayato? Uh, so basically, I sleep. We sleep on the same bed. We have two bed, two mattresses put together, and then we just sleep together. And my daughter's two and a half years old, and she still sleep with us, and that's our situation. Basically, you don't sound you don't sound so happy about this. Situation. No, 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 no. It, it's fine. I like it. I mean, that was the <laughs> kind of image that I wanted because I I wanted if I had a big family, I would like to sleep together. And um, well, I I'm not doing that. If yeah, I yeah, I know. I mean, in America, what you, you the baby sleep separately when he, he just born, right? Like, just, well, it really like, depends on the family. Yeah, it really depends on the family. But the image is that the baby sleeps by themselves when they're old enough to no longer need breastfeeding. Okay, so that's one and one year old. One, or one years old, yeah. and then you. What we do now is we have a baby monitor. Right, right. So the the mommy can just put the little like microphone and camera like on the baby, and then just carry the other part of it around. Or now it, you can even do it on your smartphone. Mm. And then like, so she can walk anywhere in the house. Cause we have bigger houses in America than in Japan. So she can go anywhere in the house and then she just can see the baby. And if the baby starts to cry, then she knows. Okay. And then when you sleep, you just put the baby monitor on. And when the baby wakes up, you know. Um, Why do you guys sleep together? I don't know. Is it a space thing? Yeah, it's a space thing. Yeah. I mean, it's... I. I don't mind. I th- maybe I don't maybe it's a bed versus futon culture thing. Yeah, I, I think that too. I mean, we don't really have like separate beds. Beds, so we tend to kind of sleep together. Yeah, because in Western cultures, we don't have tatami mats. You guys sit and sleep and basically live on the tatami mat. Like we have in West. Well, it's not everyone. It's obviously changing now in Japan too. Yeah, but traditionally, that's how it works. Mm-hmm. So, but in traditional Western cultures, we have like chair and bed, and it's separate. Oh yeah, and then uh, another thing is like, you know, sometimes you have a uh, when you're America or something, you're married couple, you have a kid, you uh, call over a babysitter, and then babysitters watching the kid, and then they go for a date. That's pretty cool. I'm like, gonna do that. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna do that for sure. Yeah, that's America thing. Last one. I want her to look into my eyes. She's saying that he's saying that his wife doesn't look at her him in the eyes when they talk to each other. Because he said Japanese people typically don't look at each other in the eyes. I don't know if that's true. That's a special case, I think. I don't think that's true. I look at people in the eyes all the time and talk to them and they look at me in the eyes. So I don't think that's a thing. Yeah. It's a special girl. What is really interesting about this news to me is just to see the difference between the two cultures because, you know, British, like, prince is kind of like the image, like, gentleman prince. Yes. And then, like, Japanese women are, like, very, like, you know, they have the image of being, like, super family supportive and stuff like mm-hmm. that and just seeing these little differences. Now, Hadza, you're kind of bicultural. You, yeah. You kind of have both cultures in you. Do yes. you and your wife have any, like, things that you couldn't, that you had to like, you know, figure out or think differences. 
Um, well, I mean, I was born here. I'm pretty much Japanese, so I'm okay. I think, but if I think sometimes the perspective or the way I think is、uh, a little different than like Japanese men.、Yeah. So she can cope with that. So that's cool. I mean, she's a kind of like multicultural thinking kind of spirit. Your wife、so. is really cool. She lived by herself in Vietnam, didn't she? Yeah, she lived in Vietnam. She lived in Canada a little bit, and so she's she's like multicultural herself. Now、so. your your wife is actually really cool. I mean, she she's just she's very she's got what do you say like she's very well rounded and she has a lot of experience. So yes, so we actually think about sometimes we think about like the Japanese culture. We actually think like, well, that's that's kind of weird. <laughs> we, we actually talk about that. So she's a little different. Yeah, I think if I ever marry a Japanese woman. I would I would want to mix the cultures, like not have her culture be the main or my culture be the main, but pick、mm-hmm. and choose the best parts. All right, that's right. Yeah, that's. that's have、fine. you ever had like Italian and Japanese fusion food before? Yeah, that's like Italian food is amazing and Japanese food is amazing, and the fusion food is even better.、Mm. That's what I want、mm-hmm. in my relationship. Fusion. Do you do you think the international marriages are more now? Do you think it's、yeah. increasing? Yes. I think the whole world is going to become brown because it's all going to mix together and become like a brownish, like mixed color. Everyone's going to look the same. Is that what? No, I just think. Well, yeah, I guess so. But I I think that it, it's a good thing. I mean, because like you know, before Kagoshima and Tokyo were considered like completely different、mm-hmm. worlds. Yeah. And now it's like everybody's Japanese, so the whole of Japan became one.、Mm-hmm. And then next is just going to be like you know, whole of Asia or the whole of where you know, just all people are going to become one.、Mm. Yeah, I think so. So I mean, there are a lot of cultural differences, but、uh, I think、uh, the one thing I want to say is that learn respect the other culture. Well, because in the、yes. end, we're all just people. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yes. And now it's time for our audience question. Here, you guys at home send us your questions about anything you want, and Hayato and I will try to answer you. So let's go to this week's question. My name is Harusto. I'm a student at Joho High School. I want to be married in the future, but I don't know how to propose. So my question is, how do people propose in America? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that question, Haruhito.、Um, well, I've I've never proposed before. Okay. Have you?、Um, yes, I have. I have proposed. But your pro- I'm but wait wait your proposal、but、was very unique. It was different.、Um, <laughs> it's gonna be long. I don't. I, but、uh, to make it short,、um, you helped me. Let's not let's not talk about me. Just 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 put your part in there, okay? To make it short. To make it short. Um, my current wife. <laughs> did did you、sorry. have a wife before? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. To make it short, my wife、yep. was gonna propose, but I heard that she was gonna propose, so I kind of reverse proposed. Now, so, so you, it was like a sub- your wife, Aisyan. Hello, she's very funky, as you would say in Japanese. Yeah, very funky. I would say in English, she's very she she knows what she wants, and she gets it.、Mm-hmm. Because when she first met you, you were like working at this、uh, like a bar, and she went to your bar every day to yeah, see you. She did, and she stood right in front of you and just watched you and waited. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, yeah, she did, and then so she like she hunted you. Yeah, I was hunted. <laughs> the animal here, prey. But no, no, because because you know I, I think I said this before on the podcast, but she looked.、Uh, she used to be my student, and she told me what her type was, and I was like, "That's Hayato." So I like took her to your bar and like introduced to her, and she looked one time at you, and she's like, "This is my husband." She decided. Yeah, from then it was pretty quick.、It、yeah, was,、uh, yeah. But anyway, so she was gonna、um, propose, propose to, to me, but I was like, "Well, as a man, as a man,、uh, it's okay." Like I, I hear like sometimes you know you get 
proposed by uh, well a woman, these days it, 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 these it's, days it's it's increasing yeah but i thought it would be nice to just kind of flip that and then propose so yes i did make that into a big surprise and did she okay so when you party, yeah. when you proposed how was it was it like one knee one knee yes uh i was actually surrounded by families and friends which is really cool which is cool um and then yeah one knee and then i i i said what now in I japanese the the phrase is kekon shite kurasai which is please uh, no please marry me please marry me yes it's it's like a kind of like a order it's not a question ah uh, in america uh, or in english in japanese when you say kekon shite kurasai shite is like a like a command so please marry me. It's, yeah, it's not. Um, it's not a question. Well, I guess you, you say "kekkon shite." I yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But in English, we say so. To answer your question, the you have a ring usually, and uh, you get on one knee and you open the box and you say something like, for example, like you know, you made me very happy. And okay, okay. So what you do? What you do? Is you, you, you get down on one knee. I'm not actually going to get down on one knee. But imagine me down on one knee. And then you open up the ring like this. And you say something like, Hayato, you've made me the happiest man in the world. <gasps> and then you say, will you marry me? That's a question. Yes. You got the... <laughs> And then, no, no. And, and then, then, and then uh, I take out the ring. He, he, you, you do it. Left hand. Yeah. And then you put the ring right here like yeah, this. Yeah. And then usually after that, you hug and kiss. We're not going to do that. But you hug and kiss. Yeah. So it's pretty much the, the same. But I feel like one of the big differences is that recently, in, uh, especially in Western countries, they like to do like really special kind of like flash mob something where they film it with a camera and they make it into a video. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Like, they do something really dramatic. So, for example, uh, you go to a basketball game and then, like, the announcer says, Will Se Shelly May please, please come to the, to the, to the floor? Mm -hmm. And then, like, the guy proposes in front of, like, a thousand people. Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah, I've seen. Or, like, the, the hot air balloon. He says, hey, look. And he says, will you marry me? Like, yeah. The hot air so like doing something like romantic and memorable is kind of yeah. like important. My, my image is like a fancy restaurant, maybe up in the mountain somewhere. Nice view. And then uh, after dinner and then, you know, just just suddenly just get on your knee and then just do that. Haruhito, the truth of the matter is, when you want to propose to the person that you love in the future, you should do it in a way that makes her happy. Because some women like the big flash mob and all their friends and family there. Some women are really shy and they just want it to be you and her in like a romantic place, just like Hayato was saying. So you should make it for her, not for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Haruhito, for the question. That's been our audience question. If you guys at home have a question for us, film yourself asking it or write us on Twitter at Kagotalk, message our Facebook page, Small Talk Kagoshima, or become our lion friend with the information on screen. And now it's time for you guys to tell us your favorite piece of Japan. Film or take photos of yourself doing whatever it is you love in Japan and tell us about it in English and we might mention you in the show. Now, today, we have a little bit of a unique submission <gasps> what is it now i just got back the other day oh where from one of the most beautiful places i've ever been to in my life where i just got back from look at this place oh, wow i went to amami oshima which is a, a island here in kagoshima prefecture ah amami Wow. It is. Have you ever been to Amami? I've been there once. Yes. Really? Yeah. When I did have. you go? Uh, maybe December. Oh, just the last this this last year. Uh, two years ago, actually. Yes. 
Because I was going to tell you, if you've never been there, it's totally like your kind of place. Oh, yeah, it's definitely, it's beautiful. But I would like to go there in summer. In summer, yeah. Because, dude, there was, okay, this is me, very pale and white boy in Amami. But look at that sand, wow. man. It is just, it's like emerald green water. It's clear water. I took this picture, like, these, these beaches are beautiful white sand beaches. There's no one there. Really? Yeah. You, every one of these beautiful beaches are basic. Yeah, there's there's a couple of people there, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, if you go to if you go to Hawaii, beaches are jam packed full of tourists. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, these yeah, yeah. are like basically there's like one or two people. Wow. Okay, so this is I'm just gonna go through a bunch of pictures and videos that that okay. um, they took. Now, this was something I, I thought was really interesting. Have you ever seen parking like this before? What is that? Right. <laughs> Usually in Japan, the parking, you put your car in and the little thing comes up from the bottom and blocks you from leaving until you pay. But in Amami, they have like this, I don't know, it's like an arm that comes down and like sits on your car. It's on the car? Yeah, it touches does the it, car. Does it go all up? Up? Yeah, it goes up when it's, when there's no car there. That's weird. Look at look at the number. Is The nine is Chinese letter. Ten is like normal. What is, why is that? That's weird. Yeah, that's... Then I went on this thing called a night tour. Night tour? Wow. Yeah, so that's actually a military Mitsubishi military Jeep. Wow. And uh, you get in there, so there were six of us on, on this tour, and the, all the windows go down, and mm -hmm. he's got all these like floodlights, these big lights that shine on the jungle, and you go through, it looks like Jurassic Park. Wow. And you see all this crazy nature. For example, this frog... So this is called Amami Ishikawa Gaeru. And it is, they say, the most beautiful frog in all of Japan. Really? And so we're driving around in this Jeep and this big, big light. The guy is shining, the tour guide is shining this really, really big light. Mm -hmm. And he stops and he gets out and he finds him in really? the middle of the night. Is this small? It's like this big. It's like the size of like, it's like half the size of a K-Tai, a cell phone. So it's kind of small. And then he says, anybody want, because we can't get out of the Jeep. We're supposed to stay in the Jeep. And he's like, does anybody want to take a picture of the, of the frog? Give me your cell phone. So he gets really close to the frog and takes this picture wow. with my phone. Isn't that That's cool? beautiful. Look yeah. Now you go to the next picture. Now this is blurry. It's actually a video and I'll, I'll give you the data for it. You can just loop the video. This is... Uh, Amami Nokuro Usagi. Uh, yes, the it's black black rabbit. Rabbit, black rabbit. Now, yeah. so this is my omiyage. This is my uh, what you call it? Uh, souvenir for you guys. Black rabbit. Mm. It doesn't look like a rabbit. So actually, about let me tell you a little bit about this rabbit. It's really interesting. It's got little ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. According to the tour guide, this is what all rabbits look like before. Oh, and really? then they went into to hotter and to colder areas and they evolved bigger ears huh? so they can control their temperature. I see. Oh, yeah, that's right. So like humans, yeah. we can we sweat. Dogs go, they pant, <laughs> right? These guys were the first bunny rabbits and they lived in a mommy area. So it was always kind of same temperature. Mm. So they didn't need to control their temperature. Oh, so see, they have little I ears. See. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. But all the, what we know as a bunny rabbit today evolved from this. Wow. Is that like rare, rare animal or is it like everywhere? So on this night tour, they said, if you could see one, you're lucky. Oh, wow. We saw like 50. Is that 50? And the thing is, because there's no natural predators for this on the island, they don't run away. Like you, you get, oh, yeah. you come up to them with the Jeep and you shine a light on them and they just eat their food and look at you like, what are you doing? Who, what are you, what is this? They don't run away. How about the snake? They won't. They Habu won't. is the poisonous snake that's on Amami. Habu and the uh, Kuro Usagi are friends. They can't be friends. They don't. They're friends. No the, way. The habu don't eat the bunny rabbit because in the winter time it gets cold, a little colder in, in Amami. The snake will go into the rabbit's house and live with the rabbit, and the rabbit will keep the snake warm. No way. Yeah. What? So they don't eat the rabbit. That's crazy. Right? And I learned all this stuff from the night tour, by the way. I totally recommend this night tour. Keep going. Okay. So then the next day we went to 
So on the last uh, a couple of day, last second to last day or something like that, we went to this place uh, in the south of the island called Konya, and we went to this karaoke box and look at this. So this is a door and it's an automatic door that's supposed to open when you press the button. Yeah. But this was on the door. What does that say, Hayato? It says manual. Can you read it? What does it say? Shudo. Shudo. And so what does the bottom say? Jido dewa arimasen. It's not automatic. <laughs> so this door at this karaoke place is an automatic door. Okay. But at some point it broke. Ah, uh, so it, it doesn't work. So anymore. instead of fixing it, they just put this sign on the door that says manual door. This is not an automatic yeah. door. <laughs> That's crazy. I love a Bobby people. I love a Bobby people. So then in this karaoke place, there's this slot machine. And what does it say? What it's, does that mean? Uh, it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fix it. They don't remove it. They just leave it there and say, this is broken. <laughs> yeah, it's been broken for a long time, it looks like. Oh, and then wait. And then so this karaoke place, Japanese uh, workers are usually very professional. Yeah. But like the girl that was running this place, she was just like, we say in Japanese, yaru ki ga nai. She yeah, was just, yeah, like, yeah. She, didn't ha she didn't care. So like you walk in, you're like, she's like, how many people? We're like two. She's like, okay, number one. And then when she like brings out her drinks and stuff, she's like, here you are. She doesn't care. And it's I was island like, style. Yeah, it was so great. Okay, go to the next one, Josh. Okay. So then from Konya, we rode a boat the next day to go on a uh, ocean tour where we go to the next one. We uh, first saw this island. So this uh, this island is often used by what is this called? Yoiko what is it called? Yoiko no uh Mujinto Zero and Sekatsu. So it's like um survival TV show. Right. They actually like they have a uh, famous they, person they, famous person go there and then they just like um spearfish fish they survive. and they they try to survive. They use, with no money. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this island is uh frequently used for that. Oh okay. They're using this one. Yeah. Okay. And then on this tour, we got to go scuba dive, not scuba diving, uh, snorkeling. We got to go snorkeling. Wow. And we got to see lots of coral. Like, I've never seen so much coral in my life. I, I always wanted to go to the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. But, yeah. like, on this tour, I think that I could see kind of what it looks like. It was mm. so much coral. And on top of that, on, this, on that island where they filmed that Zero N, whatever, the survival show... We could see this. This is a cave that you swim into wow. and the light comes in from outside and it makes this really green emerald blue water. Wow. But you can only see this for like, it's like 35 minutes every day because when the tide is too low, it doesn't happen. Uh, I see. I see. Okay. When the tide is too high, it doesn't happen. So it only is like that for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah. So you have to go there like on the right time. Wow. That's beautiful. Wow. And then also one of the things that we did, we went on a uh, a jungle day tour. Look at look at this dude. I can't even keep the camera still. It's like in the middle of the jungle in an high ace, which is like really big Japanese van. Yeah. yeah. Like we're like going out to see all the nature and stuff like that with our guide. We can't you can't even go in here without a guide. It's a protected forest. Uh -huh. And we uh -huh. could see so much amazing nature in here. It was just, it was one of the most beautiful and amazing mm. trips I've just ever had. It was really, really good. That's cool, man. I like Amami. So just look at that. Look at that ocean, man. Oh, it was great. Yeah, it's good. Like people were just relaxed and chill and nice. And it was just a really, it was, it was a really good. Trip. And also if you surf, yeah, uh, you can surf in Amami. It's uh, you can surf all year. It's warm. I mean, it wasn't cold, right? When you went no, there. No, no, no. I went swimming. Like it's, uh, you know, I went in at the end of September and it's, is I was swimming. Yeah, I don't think temperature changed that much, yeah. and it's it's very beautiful. Yeah, too bad you didn't get to see the poisonous snake. So on the, the night tour, together. on the night tour, we could wa we could see many many types of uh, uh, animals and stuff. Like I oh I for the very first time in my life I saw a firefly. Oh yeah. I've never seen a firefly oh, wow. before in my life because That's I'm from cool. Las Vegas. We don't have water. 
You don't have, oh yeah, that's right. So yeah. you need river, like really, really clean river water to have fireflies. Oh, it's your first time, huh? And yeah. I, I, yeah. It, I, I was very moved by it. And like, it looks like a little floating LED. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, those things are pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's the first time. It was really yeah. neat. But I didn't get to see the Habu. But that night tour, and we'll put the information for that night tour in the in the comment section below, in the in the in the description below. I really recommend it. That it's a really really interesting tour. Um, they usually get to see Habu, but we didn't get to see it that time. So it's I want to go again. So it was really cool. Do you would you recommend a Mavi? Yeah, absolutely. Especially since it was so cheap. Like, a, uh, did a, you go by ferry? No, no, I went there on an airplane. From Kagoshima, oh, that's, it's that's like better, yeah, yeah, like round trip from Kagoshima, it's like hundred and fifty bucks a person. It's not bad. Yeah, and then like all everything that we did was so cheap. That's good. Yeah, it was it was it was awesome. If you guys ever get a chance to come to Kagoshima, make sure you go and check out Amami. It's totally I recommend it. It's a great place. Uh, remember, guys, if you wanted to submit your favorite place in Japan, take some photos or video of you doing whatever it is you love in Japan and send them to us on Twitter at Kagotalk. Message our Facebook page, Small Talk Kagoshima, or become our line friend with the information on screen. And now it's time for Hayato Teaches Mitch. In this segment, Hayato teaches me something about Japan, Japanese culture, or Japanese language. All right, Hayato, what do you got for me? All right, so today I would like to teach you some slang. Okay. Some popular slang that are used today recent, uh, amongst teenagers. Yes. Um, now, this is Japanese slang. Japanese slang. Okay. Yes. So some of the slang that's now used in English. What is it? Uh, I'm okay. just giving an example. Anyway. So, so when you say like slang, you're talking about like LOL. LOL. Yeah. Back in the days, LOL, BRB. Yes. Be right back. OMG. Then. Yeah. OMG. Okay. This is like for writing. This is pretty much because nowadays it's uh, a lot of a uh, lot of it's SNS based, so it's like used in Twitter or Instagram. And uh, remember, SNS is not J English. I'm sorry. Social media, social media. We say social, social media. media. Yes. SNS in is a Japanese word. You guys say SNS. It's not. That's not an English word. It's social media. SNS. I'm sorry. Uh, social media. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. One thing though, let me tell you, what's popular now in Japan yeah. is tapioca. Have you have you noticed how popular it is now? Yeah, it's weird because it for me, I don't uh, the little balls in the in the liquid. It looks really gross to me. You don't like it? The visual looks gross to me. Ah, uh, okay. And then also you get that really fat straw. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> With the ball um the balls go in the straw right and it's like yeah so in kagoshima there is a what is it called grandpa, grandpa tea yeah so basically now tapioca is hit that is popular right now it's a big hit it's a big hit and there's a word is there there's a tall uh sorry there's a term called tapiru what tapiru tapioca peel it means like yaru, like do something, like yaru, tapiru, like taberu, nomu, no, tapiru. There's a term, it's called tap, let's do tapioca. Let's get tapioca, like tapiru. So like tapio? Tap, no, tapiru. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say the let's version of it? Because like taberu is like eat. Then tabemasho, uh, it, tabe, it, it, tabeyo is let's eat. Tapiru? Tapiroka. Oh, tapio, tapiro, tapiroka. <laughs> <laughs> You're making this up. No, it's true. It's the word. It's tapiru. It's a. This a term. It's. I'm not. I'm not kidding. Is there kanji for this? No, no. Tapi is katakana and ru is hiragana. So tapi. Uh, so they just basically made uh, tapioca into a verb. Yeah, that's right. They made it into a verb. Yes, tapiru. Okay. So that's one. That's popular now. Okay. No, no. I need a sentence. You got, give me a sentence. え、あ、今日ね。ちょっと、ちょっと食べる。ああ、ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ
And another one, it's it's similar to uh, like o- <laughs> OMG. Now in Japan, we say KP. KP. What do you think that is? What does it stand for? It's Japanese. KP. So you use it like OMG, like oh my god? Like KP. Kanpeki? Ah, close. Kanpai. Ah! Kanpai is KP. You don't need that. That's unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> Kanpai means cheers, right? Kanpai, yeah. But we use that like K, ka and P, P is KP. 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 <sighs> that's like social media stuff though. That's that's also like KY Kuki Kuki Yomenai. Yeah, KY Kuki Yomenai. You yeah. can't you can't read the situation. Kuki is atmosphere. Yomenai is like can't read. You can't read the situation. And then KY, English KY. KY, yeah, that's right. But it's KP. Kanpai. So, how would you use that in a sentence? KP. Eh, kyo wa minna kite kurete arigatou. Ja, KP. <laughs> but I don't think you say it. I don't think you say it. You just write it. Yeah, it's like KP, like. Okay, all right, what's the next one? <laughs> okay, so maybe this one you know. Um, so in English, you say LOL, which means laugh out loud. Yeah, but in Japanese, you just write wada for warao, like the kanji for smile. And yeah, I would like kanji for smile laugh. or laugh. Now that changed into W, remember? Oh. So that W... I know this one. You know this one, right? So whenever you type something like something, something, and then if you add W, which means like laugh. Ha ha ha. So so basically, like if you were like, like, uh, W means like yesterday was really fun, LOL. Right? That's how you'd write it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so people use W like they use LOL. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So they use W... So nowadays, I mean, not nowadays, recently the W, it looks like grass. Oh, because, be, no, no, wait, no. Eh. So there's this thing called Nico Nico Doga, uh-huh. which is, uh, it's like live video streaming in Japan. Okay. N-I-C-O, N-I-C-O dot JP or something like that. And when you watch someone... Uh, on screen, you can comment, and your comment like like flies across the screen. Oh yeah, that's right. Like so, yeah. like it will say like if you say like for example, "omoshiroi," it'll say "omoshiroi," and it'll, it'll float across the screen mm. with everybody else's comments like going across the screen. So when people are really, really, really laughing, what they would do is they just hold down W or V, and it would just be like all these W's coming across the screen. So that would look like grass. Yeah. So that's what I said. Okay, you know, and then like, yeah. But, okay. Anyway, so thank you for the <laughs> explanation. So yeah, it looks like grass. Mm-hmm. So grass me grass in Japanese is like kusa. Mm-hmm. So now everybody types. Kusa. Well, um, well, grass is actually shibafu, but weeds are kusa. Uh, yeah, the weeds. So it just it's a weird trend. I don't know how I like. I don't know how you say it. Yeah, you, you type it, but I don't know how you say it. Like. Ah, uh, <laughs> That sounds like that sounds weird, right? <laughs> Isn't it a kanji for ksa? You just put the kanji only. Yeah, but no. Sometimes, like sometimes, nani nani shite so de ksa mitai na. So ksa is like what in kanji or in like in, in kanji in kanji. Yeah. Strange. It's weird because before uh, the the uh, the Japanese lol used to be like open parentheses wada and then close parentheses, mm-hmm. right? And then that just became the kanji wada, and that just became W. Yeah, that's right. Evolved. Yeah. It's yeah. It's like uh, first generation, second generation. Now it's like the third and now, generation. And then it became gr- like grass on Nico Nico Doga. Now it's ksa. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know what's next. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, next one is Florida. This is the last one. Okay, fine. Last one. This is the last one is Florida. Florida. The, the state in America. Florida uh, shoe. Florida shoe. Yes, but. This actually means um furo haitte kuru kara ridatsuru. So which means I'm going to take a bath, so I'm going to exit. So I think this means like if you're playing a game or if you're in a chat room or something, so furo is furo o furo is furo is o furo is bath. Furo is bath. And then ridatsu 
which means exit. So, Florida, Florida. <laughs> It's crazy. So, the term for I'm going to leave this, like maybe an online game. That's right, yeah. To so, go take a bath, which probably means go to bed too. Because、yeah. in, in Japan, people take a bath and then they go to bed. <laughs> yes, yes. So, it means like, is that like good night? Uh, I don't know, but it, it's, pretty, it's pretty much like, yeah, bye. How, how do you write it? Florida? Do you write like,、uh, katakana, 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 Furo, katakana. Furo, Furorida? Furorida, yeah. Do people actually use that? Apparently, they do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. So if maybe. Okay, so, okay we're playing a game. Okay, I'm, we're playing a game. All right, we're playing a game. Playing a game. And then, and then you say something like, oh, hey, let's go for one more. Hunt. Let's do one more. Let's do one more challenge. And. Then, one more. So, I got a. Florida. Florida. Surua. Janet. Do you put. Do you need suru? Do you need to do the verb? Florida. Suru. Florida. Florida. Surua. <laughs> yeah, like, apparently. I don't know. I, 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 I'm just. I'm, a, I'm an old man, too. So. Look, you young kids at home, if,、uh, if you have any comments about this, please leave us a comment below.、Uh, if, do yeah, you guys、please. actually say Florida? Teach, teach me more. I just, I just can't believe that's so funny. Florida. Teach me more. <laughs>、uh, all right, that's been Hayato Teaches Mitch. Thank you very much, Hayato. Thank you very much. All right, guys, that's been our show. It was kind of a long show today. Yeah, we've covered a lot of stuff today. Let's see, what are we talking、yeah. about? We talked about Amami because、oh, yeah, Mo- Am- Amami was just so good. So、yeah. good. Guys, seriously, go check out Amami. It was so great.、Uh, we went over marriage, international yes, marriage. International marriage. And, and、um, proposing like an American. Yeah. How do you propose in America? Flash mob. Flash mob.、Yes. Actually, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, go look up.、Um, There is a YouTube video.、Uh, it's called, it's got Bruno Mars's I Want to Marry You song as a background. And it's like a whole neighborhood who comes out and dances while a girl's sitting in the back of a car going backwards.、Uh, it's really good. All right, guys, if you want to see a really cute、uh, proposal from an,、uh, I think it's American, maybe Canadian, but like North American, it's called Isaac's Live Lip Dub Proposal. If you guys search for that on YouTube, it's really funny. We'll actually put that link in the, in the video description, but it's really, really cute.、Uh, a lot of those videos are on YouTube, and they, they always kind of make me a little, little teary eyed to watch that to see that people are super happy. Why? I don't know. It's just. It's, do you want to make one dude, too? Dude, if you go to, a, if you go to a, a wedding, do you yeah, like. Yeah, I do. I do, get,、uh, I do get teary. In Japanese weddings, what really gets me is when the daughter. Reads the bride, reads the letter to the parents. Yeah. Because in Japanese、yeah. culture, the bride goes and becomes a, a part of the man's family. And so she says goodbye to her family. And so, as a, I mean, that doesn't really happen anymore. It's just that's just the kind of the tradition.、Uh, and they read a letter to their parents, thanking them for everything. That gets me every、oh, time. God, it makes me cry. Because they say like the most like cute things. They'll say like, you know, to their mom, they're like, you made me a bento lunchbox every day while I was a kid, and blah, blah, blah. Just stuff like that. It's like really. And the bride is crying, and the bride's mom is crying, and the bride's mom's,、uh, the bride's father is trying not to cry. It's just,、uh, everybody's like, it's hard. I'm always crying. <laughs> I love that's 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 the good part of Japanese weddings is the letter, I think. Yeah, it, that, that's like the climax or like the last. Yeah, that's the peak. The, the peak, you know. And after that, it's like, oh, okay, we can go to the Niji Kai, the second party, and get drunk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's show, hit that like button, share us with your friends, and subscribe to never miss an episode. Also, give us a comment in the comments, the comments section below. Thank you so much. See you guys next time. Goodbye. Hey guys, Josh here. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Small Talk Kagoshima. Small Talk Kagoshima is recorded in Kagoshima at Story Studios. This week's episode stars Michi and Hayato. The audio mixing is done by Hayato and is produced by me, Josh, and is executive produced by Michi. This program is brought to you in part by Mu FM, Sengaen, and Harada Gakuen. Hair services provided by Drops Hair in Tenmonkan. 
Special thank you to everyone who submitted questions, videos, and pictures. You can submit to our Twitter, at Kagotalk, or our Facebook page, Small Talk Kagoshima. Or you can add us online by searching Kago Talk or by using our QR code. Thanks again for watching, and if you enjoyed watching this episode of Small Talk Kagoshima, you can click here to subscribe, or you can click there to watch another episode. Thanks!